You know what happens when you try to practice allomancy and you have no idea what you're doing? Yeah, good times, huh? Uh, guys, it's ready to kick off Mistborn March here, but before we do, let's take a quick little look at the Mistborn Trilogy. If men read these words, let them know that power is a heavy burden. Seek not to be bound by its chains. The hero of ages shall not be a man, but a force. No nation may claim him, no woman shall keep him, and no king may slay him. He shall belong to none, not even himself. It was odd how many common features they all had. Most claimed ultimate authority, denouncing other face. Most taught of an afterlife, but they could offer no proof. Most taught about a god or gods, yet again had a little justification for their teachings. And every single one of them was riddled with the inconsistencies and logical fallacies. How did men believe in something that preached love on one hand, yet taught destruction of unbelievers on the other? How did one rationalize belief with no proof? How could they honestly expect him to have faith in something that taught him miracles and wonders in the far past? carefully gave excuses for why such things didn't occur in the present. You are offered proof only once you believe, but if you believe, you can find proof in anything. It's a logical conundrum. At first glance, the key in the locket fits may seem different. Different in shape, different in function, different in design. The man who looks at them without knowledge of their true nature might think them opposites, for one is meant to open and the other to keep closed. Yet upon closer examination, he might see that without one, the other becomes useless. The wise man then sees that both lock and key were created for the same purpose. A man can only lead when others accept him as their leader, and he has only as much authority as his subjects give to him all of the brilliant ideas in the world cannot save your kingdom if no one will listen. A man can only stumble for so long before he either falls or stands up straight. Don't worry that you aren't giving them what they want. Give them who you are and let that be enough. What's up, bookworms and Lord Ruler Brandon Sanderson fans? Welcome officially to Mistborn March. This is something that we've been building up to as we've been working our way through the Cosmere in 2020, where we're going through all of Brandon Sanderson's works, and we are finally just now getting to Mistborn March. What this is going to cover is all of Era 1 of Mistborn, so that is the original Mistborn trilogy, not the Wax of Wayne series. So guys, if you have not read this yet, you're okay. This is going to be a non-spoiler video. It's talking about why you should read the Mistborn trilogy. And as we go through the Mistborn March schedule, each Wednesday of March, I'm going to do some new Mistborn content. Now, obviously, why you should read. These are non-spoiler. They try to get people, convince them to, uh, to ch check out the series, why they should pick it up and what really made it special to me. Then each Wednesday after that, we'll be going through each ones with, uh, my normal review where I talk about, you know, what it's about, why you should read it, what makes it great. And then I'll do my little spoiler sections at the end. So uh, next Wednesday is going to be The Final Empire. That's book one. Then the week after that, obviously, Well of Ascension. Are you getting the uh, are you getting the pattern here? And we'll be ending Mistborn March with The Hero of Ages. So the original trilogy is all in the plans for this month. And uh, I'm excited to talk about it, guys, because... I'm going to give you a quick little background here, but again, just want you to let you know, no spoilers, so don't worry. There's going to be no spoilers here. Um, I have a... What's the word I'm looking for? I have some nostalgia for this series, so it is going to seem like a couple of times uh, I might be letting something slide that usually I'd be critical of. And I'm going to admit that might happen here because this was my gateway to Brandon Sanderson. This series 
is how I discovered the Lord Ruler. And obviously, you know now, if you know these books, you know how I got that name, the Lord Ruler. Uh, I had read plenty of uh, fantasy at the time. I'd never actually checked out Brandon Sanderson. I didn't read Will of Time at that moment. So I had no idea about anything about him other than he finished the Will of Time. That's really all I knew about him. Uh, a close personal friend was a very big fan. And uh, I, I told him, this is kind of a funny story. I told him, I'll tell you what, if you check out these first law books I'm always talking about, I'll check out your Brandon Sanderson. Well, this was in late 2016. Uh, I am now a huge Brandon Sanderson fan, and uh, I believe he's on book two of First Law. So uh, uh, if he is watching, he knows uh, who he is. And uh, But I, I, I want to thank him because, you know, he's the one who got me into the Red Rising series that I love so much. And he's the one who uh, got me into uh, Lord Ruler Sanderson here. So it all started with these books. It was late 2016. I was just so angsty about Game of Thrones, about Song of Ice and Fire, just never, never having any new books. And, you know... I was like, I'll never start another series that isn't done. And Fran was like, well, you know, check out this Mistborn trilogy by Sanderson. You know, he's like the gold standard of fantasy right now. And I was like, well, it's complete. And he's like, well, the first part is. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. He's like, no, no it's, don't misunderstand me. It is a closed series. So, yes, Era 1 and Era 2, are they connected? Sure. But like most Cosmer stuff, you don't have to read them all for it to make sense. So he convinced me to, to, uh, to do this original trilogy. And, you know, at the time he told me about Stormlight Archive. And I was like... So there's two books out of a 10-book series out? Yeah, I won't be reading that one, but I'll tell you what. I'll check out the uh, the Mistborn trilogy and see what it's all about. And what I got was a mix of kind of a gritty, hopeless world that meets My Fair Lady. Am I kind of dating myself on that one? My Fair Lady, that was actually before my time, but my mom loved that movie. So, you know, I got stuck watching it quite a bit. But if you've seen that movie, you kind of understand what I'm getting at there uh, with this book. But uh, I'm going to do my usual formula here. Like I said, we're going to begin by talking about what it is about. And I believe that the story itself, now, like I said, guys, I read this three years ago. So there are a couple of details I might still be a little fuzzy on. Uh, so if I get a couple of things wrong, don't get too mad at me. I believe uh, I did a quick little scan and, and, sh and shook my memory a little bit uh, by, by going through a couple of things to make sure, you know, some skimming in these books to make sure that I remembered everything for the most part. And I believe I do because, like I said, this is a series I've, I find very dear. So uh, I remember it pretty well. But, uh, you know, there are some things where I'm like, hey, you didn't remember that Blank said that? No, Blank said this. Oh, that might happen. Like I said, it's been a few years. But anyway, the story itself takes place in a world within the Cosmere called Skadriel. It might be Skadriel. I always said Skadriel. But uh, this area is kind of blackened with the ash of these these volcanoes that are just continuously flowing, and they're turning the land brown. Uh, they're you know they're ruining the earth. They're they're, they're making the, the sky red, and everything's just kind of covered in ash and mist. So uh, it's a society divided between what is known as the Ska, which are the uh, you know the the peasants, and they're basically slaves at this point to the nobles. And so the it's a, a feudal society, and it's known as the Final Empire, which is the name of the first book. Actually, the first book's just called, it's kind of like Star Wars, how over time it's become known as A New Hope. This one was just called Mistborn, The Final Empire, and over time it's just kind of been called The Final Empire. At least that's what I've been doing uh, because it was just, you know, Mistborn just became known as the, the series. But uh, yeah, like I said, feudal society known as The Final Empire and its head is the Lord Ruler, which is basically a immortal living god and Again, the namesake that I have given to Brandon Sanderson. You know, I never claim to be entirely original on this channel. It's just something I always felt like kind of kind of his fit because he's just so far in front of every other modern fantasy author, in my opinion, right now, in quality quality plus quantity. So I know some of you will probably stump for some other writer that's wrote like one book in the last 15 years. You know who those are. Uh, there's several of them, and they all seem to have like you know just their darling, adoring fans and cultists. To me, uh, I am going to take quantity plus quality over just quality and then nothing. So that's why I put uh, Sanderson at the top of the heap when it comes to modern fantasy. Except for Joe Abercrombie, but that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> All right, so uh, with this story, what it's about is we primarily follow Vin. She is a street urchin, and she has a new mentor named Kelsier. Now, this is very, very bare bones here because I don't want to reveal anything. Uh, but she begins to work with a large crew, and I'm not going to go through all these characters' names, but they have an ultimate goal of overthrowing the Lord Ruler and his tyrannical ways. So, I mean, right away, I'm like, okay, well, this is like a, a spy heist kind of thing. Yeah, okay, I'm down with this. Uh, lots of undercover kind of stuff sneaking around. 
Uh, but along the way, you're introduced, like I said, this ensemble cast, and they all have roles, and they all end up important. They all have their own stories, and that's about as much as I can tell you about why it's great. Just that these characters, I'm just going to say, you will fall in love with all these characters. But I'll get into that now when I talk about why it's great or why it's not so good. Well, obviously, I've tipped my hand here. You know why it's great. I, I mean, I'm going to say it's great, but not why it's not so good. Not that the books are above any criticism at all. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let me talk about the criticism first before I gush over everything. And it's kind of, I'm going to spin it around into a positive here, is the second book does get bogged down with the in-world politics. Uh, what I've said is the first book I read, I was like, wow, that was just like a fun adventure. And the second book, I was like, whoa, okay. This guy isn't just a, you know, a thrill what's the word on like an adrenaline junkie of a, of, a, of a writer here he can write some political intrigue too and I, i've mentioned on the last few videos i'm gonna quit bringing it up every single time i promise about how i've gotten the reputation of someone who doesn't like politics in my fantasy no i love in world politics i don't like you know political allegory to real world that we live in events uh, i like just straight you know fiction i like i like my imaginary fantasy worlds to be imaginary and strictly original. So the, no, the politics in this are good, but I can see why it would bog someone down that first time. Uh, it's one of those things I feel like uh, when you read it in hindsight or you do a reread, you're gonna get a lot more out of it than that first time. At first it'll seem like, okay, I don't really understand why there's just so much political intrigue, I guess, in, in book two. But, so I say that uh, you know the second book is, is my least favorite of the series, but you're talking about a series that gets four or three four-star reviews from me. So I mean, it's not like there's anything in these books that detract from anything and don't make it just the highest of recommends from me. Now, did I give Well of Ascension a four or three? I don't remember, but I know that book one and book three are my favorite parts, book three especially. Uh, so I, I feel like if I was ranking them, I'd go three, one, two. But again, it's one large story. It's like the first Law series. You need to read all three of them to get the series. It's one long book broke up over three volumes. That's, that's about all I'll say. But what makes it so good is the magic system. And I feel like this is a broken record when it comes to talking about Sanderson. It's a given. When you're in a Sanderson book, there's going to be some kind of magic system that feels a little different than anything. But this magic system is what drew me into a story that made me say, huh, this guy is different. This guy is really, really different. Uh, I feel like he's never, this is where I discovered that he was not the type to just kind of be content to rest on old fantasy tropes. Uh, is he immune to those? No, no. But uh, the magic system in this is the most striking quality of this series. And it's, try to get into it without getting too much spoilers here. When I first opened the first book, and it has a uh, elemental chart of metals. And what metals, when you combine them with other metals, what they do. And I'm like, huh. Okay, so we're in chemistry class. Okay, you know, chemistry was never a subject I really particularly cared for. But it, the, the magic system is called allomancy, and it is, it is based on ingesting and burning these metals that give their users special, like, superhero powers. And these powers vary by which metal is ingested. You know, not every allomancer has the ability to burn every metal. And that's, like I said, all I can say without getting spoilery. But just know that the elements being used Everything unravels in unexpected ways, and there's more to it than just, okay, you can burn metal. I've got the magic system. Uh, it's not one of those things, like I said, that's like super, super confusing. Uh, it's probably more more complex than it was in Warbreaker. I, I talked about in Warbreaker recently that uh, the magic system was, was difficult at first, but rather easy to grasp as far as most standard ones are. This one's probably a little more complex than that, but it's nothing that you aren't going to be able to get. And I have said a couple of times that, uh, that while I was first reading these books, I was like, okay, okay, I'm looking at the chart, I'm like, okay, they're using this metal, and then she's burning this metal, and if you combine it with that, then it's doing this. After a while, I was just like, you know what, they're fighting. That's it, they're fighting. If you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of it, you can, but you don't have to. You don't have to, to really enjoy what is happening here. Um, next up is the characters. Uh, I talked about how you would end up loving every single character. I mean, I did. I did. I felt like there was a character for everything. There was the, you know, the the, the planner. There was the the adventurers. There was the hothead. There was the, the the comic relief. There was just everything that you want in a full ensemble cast like this. It was like a like a fellowship. 
or something like that. Uh, just There was something that checked off all those boxes that you want, not those that you're like, oh God, they got to check the boxes. No, I know that's become like a derogatory term now saying you got to check the boxes, but this is in a way that where it's like, it's everything that you want. You've got every personality type checked here and it just, this crew just flows together in such a brilliant way that I fell in love with every single one of them. You know, and something that people know I'm a big Grimdark fan. Uh, there are some anti-hero sentiments with these characters, but it isn't Grimdark. It isn't Grimdark. They, they aren't all great characters, and Sanderson does really do a good job at embracing who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. There isn't a ton of gray in here, but all of the main players are incredibly flawed, incredibly flawed so don't be thinking okay it's just you know good goody two shoes versus you know super mustache twirling bad guy nothing like that at all in fact the bad guys in this uh it'll throw you for a loop more than once uh but again they're incredibly flawed but never to a way where you don't relate to them you don't find yourself rooting for them you want the good guys to succeed here and you know sometimes when they succeed you think you know i don't know if that was the best plan you know and it, it gives you lots of things to think about uh, next up, I want to talk specifically about Vin. Vin is the uh, protagonist, I guess you'd say, of this book. And she is, without a doubt, my favorite lady character that Brandon Sanderson has ever created. Dare say I put her up there with Buffy the Vampire Slayer as my favorite fantastical character of all time. She is so damn good. And, I mean, she just, like I said, one of my favorite heroines ever. So, so relatable in a way that, like, it, it, no, before you ask, not Mary Sue. She is not a Mary Sue at all. She's got a past that's slowly uncovered. Uh, she's got serious trust issues. It complicates her relationships. It complicates everything. And, yeah, it's just, she's just wonderfully written. And she has a character arc in this that's just fantastic. And I, I can see where people might get some traditional fantasy tropes out of this. I don't see it. I don't see it at all, other than the fact that, you know, you have like your main character. I mean, you're going to have that in most stories or whatever, but this isn't like a chosen one farm girl kind of thing. This isn't anything like that. So uh, yeah, yeah, Ben is a spectacular character. And you guys know how much uh, I love series, series, uh, Siri and Vivenna and, and Warbreaker, how much I love Shalon. I got her, I got her, you know, signed picture up there. Not signed by Shalon, actually. It was signed by, you know, Brandon Sanderson. But <laughs> if Shalon wants to sign it, I'd, I'd love it. Anyhow. Uh, in this, by far, Vin is my favorite female character ever written. That's how strong of a character she is. But I also want to mention Eland here. Uh, Eland, I guess you would say if there is a male lead in this series, Dalinar from the Stormlight Archive, that's still my favorite male character that Sanderson's created, but Eland is freaking right on his shoulder. He's right there with them. And I feel like this guy is my spirit animal because he has no interest in being involved in politics and he loves to read. I feel like this guy would be like taking a fencing lesson and be reading a book the whole time. Uh, yeah, I, I just love him so much. And that's as far as I'll go uh, with that, about, about his character because I feel like it would give some things away if I talk more about it. But I'll just say by the end of the trilogy, I was a full-on fanboy for Elon. I love him. I love him to death. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not even going to hide that. Uh, I love Vin. I love Elon. They are fantastic characters. And you could not have two better leads you know, to spearhead your series than these two, in my opinion. Now let's get to why you should read it. I mean, obviously this is a why you should read Mistborn, right? I mean, without spoiling, I'll say that this is fantasy filled with twists and turns that never feel forced. So much fantasy these days, it either feels forced, it either feels like insta-love, or it feels like deus ex machina. I never get any of that in this. Every surprise in this feels like it has been planned from the very beginning. And with each twist, that you get realized, you realize it's been foreshadowed chapters and maybe even books, you know, earlier. Uh, each revelation is just so gratifying because you can see so clearly how Sanderson built it, just, just built up to these moments. You know, he, he, he made them matter. And he was always one or two steps ahead of you the entire time. It's just brilliant. And something I always hear in my Wheel of Time videos is how much foreshadowing you see when you go and do a reread after you've completed the series. I imagine the same. I haven't read reread this, but I, I, I'd i like to. I really would. That's how much I, I enjoy it. My schedule's just nuts, so I didn't have time to reread this. Uh, but uh, yeah, this series would definitely be the same because, I mean, just the preludes that it has before each chapter in this, first read, you're like, what is this? Who is talking to me? After you finish it, you're like, 
Oh, so I feel like in a when you finish a trilogy, you could go back and just especially those preludes would make so much sense, but so much foreshadowing, so many things that you'll see that you didn't see the first time and realize, yo, he wasn't making this up as he went. He knew where he was going the whole time. And that's what makes Sanderson so special, in my opinion. So uh, uh, lastly, I think it's, a, it's just a it's a great entry point to Brandon Sanderson. If you've been holding off, you know, you're not really sure where to start or whatever. I feel like this is the perfect place to start. A lot of people want to start with Stormlight Archive. I feel like that's kind of a heavy read. I feel like if you read like Wheel of Time, you're fine. You're fine. You'll be fine with that. I feel like that is Sanderson's Wheel of Time. Uh, but if you're just, you know, you're a casual fantasy reader, I wouldn't recommend starting with Stormlight Archive because it's quite complex and it's quite large compared to this. Yes, this has a large ensemble cast, but each character is so different that you don't have a problem differentiating each one of them. But, uh, so a criticism that I do hear, and I can see why people say this, I can see why they don't like it, is a little, as some people say it is kind of YA-ish. And, and, and I, you know, I just got butchered on the Discord recently for saying that, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of YA. I'm not. I'm not. If you are, that's awesome. I think that's awesome that you like it. Again, what I always say is I have my opinions, and I want you to form your own. If you like YA stuff, Super, man. That's awesome. Do what works for you. As long as you are reading, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's the freaking funny pages. As long as you're reading, I want people to read. That's it. So uh, if we disagree on these things, that's fine. Uh, I know some people feel like I just completely diminish the YA genre. Uh, I feel the same that people do that to horror. People treat horror like it's not a real genre, like it should does like it doesn't matter, like it's it's it, you know B material. Uh, so I, I get that. I get where you're coming from. Uh, I don't understand the whole tribalism between genres. I think it's just gotten kind of crazy and weird. But uh, not to not to derail there, but what I'm saying is if you consider this YA, I can see it because there is some kind of teeny romance moments. I feel like the romance is, is done well, but there are some kissy-kissy moments where you're going to be like, Okay, all right, you know, got to do that to try to get the uh, try to get to, you know the demographics even with uh, with this story with the readers. But uh, I wouldn't call it YA. It's not grim dark, and it isn't traditional fantasy for the most part. But I usually refer to it as PG thirteen because there is this is not PG thirteen. There is a fuck ton of violence in this, a fuck ton. There is a lot of violence. I dare say that there's more violence in this than there is in Stormlight. There's definitely more violence in this, and there is a Wheel of Time, and people get people, people don't call Wheel of Time, you know, young adult. So uh, there is a hell of a lot of violence in this. Uh, there is a hell of a lot of dark moments for me to call it uh, YA. But it also, you know, anytime you've got a book that has a heavy romance in it with young characters, people are going to consider it young adult. Do I think that young adults could read and enjoy this? Absolutely. Do I feel like a 40-year-old man could enjoy these books yes i mean i read them when i was 37 so you know i really think that it's it's just one of those that kind of transcends all that it really can fit just about any demographic that you're looking for here and um i think i'd put it kind of like i did the red rising books now the red rising books did kind of slowly migrate into grim dark books four and five are straight grim dark but uh, i felt like the earlier books were more approachable but in a way that it was an adult story with young characters, more so than I'd call it YA. If that sounds like I'm tap dancing around it, maybe I am. I don't know, but you know, I, I'm looking forward to uh, to talking about each one of these books in depth because it's actually harder to do uh, non-spoilers, I think, uh, than it is to really do uh, spoilers for these. But um, uh, yeah, again, I'm looking forward to revisiting and talking about this. Uh, like I said, I won't have time to actually reread it because of the Wheel of Time stuff. Uh, before Jordan Kahn and the, uh, the the Dresden Files thing just kind of really just, you know, took over my schedule this year. So I didn't have time to reread these. But I am going to be doing Mistborn Era 2 for the first time starting in May. Uh, so that'll be Mistborn May, you know. So <laughs> anyway, it won't be quite the same as that. Uh, guys, I know the Mistborn March tag isn't anything original. I, I, I got it from a viewer. Uh, and he said he got it from another YouTuber. So uh, I definitely am not trying to christen that. It's just kind of what I'm using. So uh if you feel like I've stole that from you, I, I apologize. It's just, it's so catchy, right? Mistborn March, Mistborn May. Uh, but guys, uh, absolutely recommend these of the highest order. Uh, I feel like you can get the paperback trilogy on Amazon usually for like 20 bucks. I see it on sale all the time. It is a great read. You will not be able to put them down. Even with that more sluggish parts in book two, the payoff is worth it. And just like with all Sanderson, where I say that his third act are the best, 
treat it like that. Book one is the first act. Book two is the second act. And book three, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the whole third book is the Sandra Lynch in this series. And uh, I'll just say, you'll walk away feeling some sort of way. The ending is still highly controversial and divisive among the fan base. Some people absolutely loved it. Some people did not care for it. Other people, myself included, were just absolutely devastated by it. So uh, if that's not a hook for you, I don't know how else I can really sell this to you more except to just say uh, Sanderson is the gold standard of fantasy right now. And if you haven't read any of his books, this is the best entry point, And I will stand by that much more so than Warbreaker, much more so than Elantris, definitely more than, uh, than Stormlight Archive. This is the most approachable way to enter into the Cosmere. And guys, I hope that you will. So uh, let's try to keep the uh, the spoilers for the individual videos. So if you want to talk about the Mistborn trilogy in the comments, please drop down in it. Tell me why you love it. Tell me why you didn't like it or whatever. Like I said, try not to get too spoilery in case someone is, uh, is new to the series and wants to uh, kind of continue to be sold on the series. But guys, I can't control that. I don't delete any comments, so I won't be deleting any comments to get spoilers. So proceed at your own caution or whatever. But uh, yeah, read it. Read this. You'll be able to read this in a couple of weeks. This is a great, great series, and it just you'll just fly through it. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'm looking forward to continuing Mistborn March starting with the Final Empire next Wednesday. So drop in the comments, and I will talk to you there.